Welcome to the BiomedWire podcast, powered by IBN. This original audio production delivers market and sector insights, as well as exclusive interviews with innovative executives shaping the future in fast-moving industries, and may feature a client partner of IBN or one of the 60-plus investor-focused brands within IBN's dynamic brand portfolio. As a multifaceted financial news and publishing company, IBN leverages its extensive distribution network, utilizing multiple proprietary corporate communication tools to introduce both public and private companies to a vast and diverse audience of investors, consumers, influencers, journalists, and other targeted segments of the public. IBN may have received compensation to produce this audio content. Please be sure to read IBN's entire disclaimers for full disclosures. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the next revelatory episode of IBN's BiomedWire podcast. Hi, and welcome to another exciting show here with me, Carmel Fisher, where we highlight, spotlight, and bring you all the exciting bits of information happening out there in the capital markets. Uh, today, we are spotlighting once again on Cotelic Therapeutics Inc., listed on OTCQB as OTLC. They are a clinical stage pharmaceutical biopharmaceutical company, apologies, um, engaged in the development of drugs for the treatment of orphan oncology indications. Now, we did sit down with Dr. True not too long ago, and we caught up with the latest developments, but it just so happens that things are developing a lot quicker than we thought they would, and we are here once again. Dr. True, thank you, and welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we see that there is exciting news surrounding the recent news about um, announcement of Oncotelix drug candidate, right, the SAFU 003. Tell us more about this and, and the approval they just received. So we're very excited about the um, SAPU 003 approval to start phase one clinical trial. This is a drug that in targeting breast cancer specifically. It's very, affinity, uh, it's very uh, effective as a finitor and it has a, like a billion dollar market size. Mm -hmm. And breast cancer, you're looking at roughly 30, 40 billion in terms of addressable market size, and we've grown beyond that by 2030 to 50 billion, roughly. So we are very excited about this drug candidate. We feel that it really has a lot of potential to change how breast cancer patients get treated and improve on Affinitor, which is already a blockbuster drug. Yeah, that is a very important phase. We, we know the market's huge for breast cancer, so I'm sure this is definitely exciting, not only investors, but the patients out there. Um, we see that this approval comes from the Australian Human uh, Research Ethics Committee, HREC, correct? Yes. What does um, that particular approval give you? The approval allows us to move the drug into clinical testing. So... We have done all the preclinical testing to demonstrate that it's safe and effective. Now we, it, we need to test it in the phase one clinical trial. Once the phase one clinical trial is uh, done, we're moving that straight into a phase three trial and then into regulatory approval. Very exciting. But what does DESI particle pipeline really mean for patients? The DESI particle is our really next generation nanomedicine. We built a Braxin around albumin, right. but then because of that, it has all the problem with albumin. So we made Synvelog, which is you know, albumin free. But both of them still didn't do what really I want to do, mm -hmm. is to be able to target the drug, deliver the drug r rapidly to the tumor. DESI particle does that. It's smaller than either one of those guys. It's only between 10 to 20 nanometer. The moment you administer it, it goes straight to the tumor and does its job. It goes there and it kills the tumor. Very, very interesting. And you mentioned that this is the first drug candidate um, to be entering the clinical trial. Can you elaborate about the core technology that you know, you'll be using and why it's better than any of your competitors? The core DESI particle platform is working in, an, in a formulation space that people rarely use. Everyone look at nanoparticle at roughly about 100 nanometer, and it doesn't really allow it to go into the tumor. It has to be smaller than that. So we designed DESI particle to address that. It's smaller than you know, 10 to 20 nanometer, so it exits the blood vessel, it targets the tumor, and it does its job uh, without causing toxicity. So affinity, for, the, for example, if you administer it orally, only 10% of it get into the tissues, uh, right. into the tumor. So bioavailability is low. 
uh, the patient have to really take a lot of the drug mm. to get enough in to kill the tumor. Whereas for us, we inject the drug in, you get 100% of the drug, it go and does the job. Wow. Yeah. Pivotal, to say the least, right? right. Um, but obviously, there's, we know that you were hugely successful with the Braxane and Sinvaloc, and mm. there must be a playbook that Oncotelic has to, to find success of that nature. What parts of that playbook will you be implementing um, for the new drug? I mean, our focus has always to be accelerate development as quickly we can to get as quickly we can to marketable approval drug. So if we go from concept to clinical trial to market product, we just have to shorten everything. So here is an example where we took it from concept to clinical trial in less than one year. When that's the record for anything. And to go from there to market, we anticipate this to finish phase one fairly quickly and then move to phase three. So within two or three years, we would have this drug product approved, which is faster than traditional drug development where you're looking at 10, 15 years for approval. Wow, that really puts things into perspective. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you did mention something about bioavailability going from 10% to 100%. That right. sounds really significant, um, but what does it mean for patients exactly? For the patient, it means that you don't need to take a lot of the drug mm. and expose yourself to uh, gastric toxicity, because right. if you take the pill, only 10% get into your circulation, so you have to take a lot and a lot of pill to right. get enough in to kill the tumor. Whereas for here, you take one simple infusion of our drug, SAFU003, you get 100% of the drug into your uh, tissue, into the tumor, and kill up the tumor. And very minimal amount in the gut. So you don't have that gut tox that you uh, are looking at. Yes, and you know, I've obviously I think in these days we all know at least one person who's a cancer patient of some sort, right? Um, and we know that it's pretty toxic. The things that are meant to help them can be mm -hmm. really toxic and could be actually the cause of their detriment, uh, but having said that, that's amazing that things will change so quickly, um, that they'll take less toxicity in their systems to see their better health sooner. And so there's gonna be a lot of demand, that, that's what this tells me. What can investors look forward to as well? Yeah, I think our investors should be looking at um, the progress of the trial. Right. We're gonna move forward to phase one, we're gonna have first phase and then we're gonna finish the phase one, but more importantly, to go straight in from phase one into phase three, because we anticipate this is a very abbreviated um, approval pathway. So we go straight into phase three, but then your investors should be looking at other drugs that we're gonna feed into the pipeline. Our DC particle platform is very robust. We can take on pretty much any drugs. Wow, lots yeah. of versatility there then. Right. Very, very exciting. And we can't wait to bring you guys a little bit more about the developments as they unfold. Is there anything you want to let our investors and audience know before we round off? No, we are, we are very excited about this drug product. The fact that we achieved this milestone in record time. Definitely something to be excited about, uh, myself included. So, guys, you stay tuned. Make sure you get back on this show, and we'll bring you more updates as we un unfold. Uh, and thank you. Stay tuned for more. Dr. Truth, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. The BioMedWire podcast is an original content production powered by IBM, a multifaceted financial news and publishing company that delivers next-generation corporate communication solutions. Utilizing proprietary corporate communication tools such as news aggregation and syndication, social communication, and brand awareness techniques, among others, IBN introduces both public and private companies to diverse audiences to enhance reach and recognition. IBN may receive compensation for services and solutions provided to its client partners. You should assume that the owners, officers, and directors of IBN or financial analysts mentioned in this production may hold a position in and may intend to trade the securities in their own accounts. This production is not an offer or recommendation to buy or sell any securities that may be mentioned in this production. The information in this broadcast is presented solely for informative purposes and is not intended to be or should it be construed as investment advice. As in all investments, investment in the featured companies carries inherent investment risk. 
Listeners should review the companies thoroughly with a registered investment advisor or registered stockbroker. This production by IBN is not purported to be a complete study of the featured company or other companies mentioned. Information used in statements of fact have been obtained from featured companies and other sources but not verified nor guaranteed by IBN as to completeness and accuracy. Such information is subject to change without notice. Please see IBN's full disclaimers and disclosures at www.ibn.fm forward slash disclaimer. Music in this episode is by Infraction. For more, visit inaudio.org.